This is renal tumor pathology case 5. The patient is a 56-year-old male with a renal mass. From lower magnification, we appear to have an epithelial neoplasm based on hypercellularity, the cohesive nature of the tumor, abundant cytoplasm, and it appears to be covered by a fibrous capsule. Also notice that we have both delicate capillaries within this tumor and also thicker hyalinized blood vessels. A closer view of the tumor shows the delicate capillary network, the abundant cytoplasm, and at least some evidence of cytoplasmic clearing. So if you're moving quickly, you might conclude that this is a clear cell renal cell carcinoma, but let's look at a, a couple of clues that may point us in a different direction. Number one, most of the cells that appear to be clear from low magnification are actually not truly optically clear in the sense that they have granular material in the cytoplasm. That's the first clue. The second clue is the cell membranes are very prominent. Some people use the term plant-like cell membranes, but the main thing is that we have a very prominent cell membrane within the tumor cells. Now we can see the nuclear morphology. The nuclei have very distinct irregularities to the nuclear membrane. In other words, they look to be folded and grooved and these sorts of things, and you also have pseudo-inclusions. On higher magnification, you can really see these prominent plant-like cell membranes. Now some people describe these nuclei as being raisinoid or raisin-like because of these nuclear membrane irregularities. Also notice that we do have conspicuous nucleoli within these tumor cells. So here's another cell that shows us similar features. It has this lobulated folded nuclear membrane. It has a prominent nucleolus. I focused on this cell to show you one of the characteristic things that you'll see is the clearing around the nucleus. This is cytokeratin 7, so you can see it's strongly positive for cytokeratin 7 with a membrane staining pattern, again highlighting these thick prominent cell membranes. This is a Hales colloidal iron, so it's positive for iron. So based on the combination of findings, your differential diagnosis would include chromophobe renal cell carcinoma versus a clear cell renal ca cell carcinoma. Now we talked about in a previous video that clear cell renal cell carcinoma is generally going to be negative for cytokeratin 7. Another helpful feature are the thick prominent cell membranes, which is a feature of a chromophobe renal cell carcinoma and also the observation that the tumor cells really did not have truly optically clear cytoplasm, at least in the majority of the tumor cells. So the diagnosis is chromophobe renal cell carcinoma. This is a less common variant of renal cell carcinoma representing around 5% of cases. The mean age is similar to other common forms of renal cell carcinoma, somewhere between 50 to 60, more common in men. Most of these are asymptomatic and they're often found incidentally. So here's a question. What genetic syndrome do, does this patient likely have? So here we have, you can see these cystic structures in the skin. And here's a histo histologic picture of that. They've got this particular renal tumor. And of course, it's going to be the one we're talking about now, which is the chromophobe renal cell carcinoma. And you can see here it's mahogany brown, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. And there are pulmonary cysts and blebs. So what is the genetic syndrome? It's Bert Hogg Dubé. And this is an autosomal dominant syndrome caused by mutations in the folliculin gene on 17P. They have a seven-fold increased risk in renal cell carcinoma and the most common histologic subtype is chromophobe renal cell carcinoma. They can also get benign renal oncocytomas, and that can be a difficult differential between the chromophobe renal cell carcinoma and an oncocytoma. The skin lesions that I showed are fibrofolliculomas and, of course, pulmonary blebs. So chromophobe renal cell carcinoma among the top three we already mentioned has the best survival. The five-year survival is greater than 90%. And the prognosis is much better than that of clear cell renal cell carcinoma and better than papillary renal cell carcinoma.
The characteristic gross finding is the color of the tumor, said to be mahogany brown. Sometimes they'll have a central scar. And there are really two variants, the classic one that we just saw, and there's an eosinophilic variant where the cells are, have much more prominent eosinophilic change within the cytoplasm. And it's that latter variant, the eosinophilic variant, that can be difficult to distinguish from a renal oncocytoma. But they're all characterized by the prominent cell membranes, the raisinoid nuclei, and occasionally you'll see perinuclear clearing. They mention eccentrically hyalinized vascular walls in the books, and that can, I suppose, be a helpful feature. So here are some photographs. As you can see, if you're moving quickly, you can mistake these for a clear cell renal cell carcinoma because it's not uncommon to have some cytoplasmic clearing. However, the prominent cell membranes and the eccentrically hyalinized blood vessels or vascular walls can be helpful clues. This is a chromophobe renal cell carcinoma. What stain is shown? Well, that's easy because we just saw it. It's Hale's colloidal iron. This is an EM photograph from a chromophobe RCC. What does this illustrate? I suppose they could put this on the boards. It's more of an older technique for these tumors, but these are characteristic findings, and they're called microvesicles. And if your differential is between a chromophobe renal cell carcinoma and an oncocytoma, you can use EM, and I did in the past, and you look for the dense mitochondria that you find within the oncocytoma and the microvesicles that you find within the chromophobe renal cell carcinoma. The issue is that the eosinophilic variant of chromophobe RCC also has a lot of mitochondria. So once that variant was described, I quit doing EM for these tumors. You are evaluating a renal tumor with a differential of oncocytoma versus chromophobe renal cell carcinoma. Which of these is diffusely positive for cytokeratin 7? Chromophobe renal cell carcinoma. Oncocytomas typically are negative or they have only scattered positive cells. Now as a side note, I have seen cases of chromophobe renal cell carcinoma that only had scattered positive cells. So that's the end of the video for case five.